Okay, in today's episode, we're going to talk about ketones. What even are ketones? I'll see you inside. So you've probably heard about the ketogenic diet, and if not, this is simply a diet that is high in fat and very low in carbohydrate and protein. And I want to make sure that this is understood. A ketogenic diet, or at least the ketogenic diet that was first created for the treatment of epilepsy, actually consisted of about 80% fat and only 20% protein and carbohydrate. And the reason for this is because the ketogenic diet was actually first used to treat epilepsy. And this is because it appeared that the epileptic brain actually ran much better and much more efficiently on ketones rather than glucose. Therefore, the point of this diet was actually to provide the brain with as much ketones as possible. And one thing we know about ketosis is that if we eat an abundance of protein, we can also turn this into glucose through gluconeogenesis, which will reduce our body's necessity to create ketones. The formation of ketones is actually somewhat of a backup system if there is glucose present. However, I'm not quite sure whether or not the human body was meant to run on ketones or glucose. Many people argue that the brain prefers ketones, but other people will argue that glucose is the predominant and the optimal fuel source. And now I personally do not have a dog in this race, and whether or not someone wants to fuel their body on entirely glucose or fuel themselves on entirely ketones, that's completely up to them. And the reason why I say this is because it actually appears that babies are naturally in a state of ketosis. And it seems that the reason that babies are so easily able to put on body fat is because the body wants to have this store of body fat so it can almost constantly be producing ketones. However, ketones aren't actually the preferred fuel source technically. The reason that we begin to create ketones is because we are unable to produce enough of the enzymes required to continue to run our metabolism on fatty acids and glucose. Simply, it appears that the fatty acids and the glucose compete for the same enzymes, and if we are using much less of the glucose and much more fatty acids, these enzymes seem to run out much more quickly. So we actually get a buildup of molecules that get diverted into a different pathway, and this is the pathway of creating ketones. And I'm going to walk you through this, and it's actually quite interesting. So ketones are actually produced in the liver and broken down and utilized throughout the body. And in a circumstance in which glucose is scarce or low, glucose degradation for the purpose of ATP production is actually limited. Meaning we actually try to preserve as much of the glucose that's in our body as possible. And to do this, we actually begin to mobilize fatty acids from our stored body fat to spare glucose for the brain. And the reason that we actually spare glucose is because there are specific tissues that can only run on glucose. It's estimated that about 25% of the brain metabolism is required to be run strictly using glucose. And it's likely because some of these cells and neurons in our brain actually don't have mitochondria. Therefore, they can't actually go through the oxidative process to use fatty acids for fuel. And there are also cells in our gut with a similar issue. Without a mitochondria, we can't oxidize body fat or go through sufficient and full oxidation of glucose. Therefore, we have to actually rely on fermentation of glucose in order to produce any energy. And I'm not going to stick on this topic for a very long time, but I will just mention it. It appears that some cancer types actually also rely on this fermentation process. And this is why using ketones or a state of nutritional ketosis has been shown to benefit some types of cancer. Simply, the cancer cells rely on fermentation, but the healthy cells still have mitochondria that can use the ketones and fatty acids. And since the predominant fuel source for fermentation is going to be glucose, 
if we starve these cancer cells of the glucose, but supply the healthy cells with ketones, then we are essentially feeding our healthy cells and starving the cancer. However, absolutely none of this is medical advice, it is simply just a theoretical idea. And you need to talk to your doctors and healthcare practitioners before changing your diet or supplementation regimen whatsoever. But let's get back to ketosis. So I already have a podcast describing the entire process of essentially losing body fat in detail. So once this process has occurred, if we continue to limit the amount of glucose that's coming in and continue to use this fat-fueled energy system, there seems to be a limit for the amount of time we can go off of running strictly on fatty acids if we do not intake sufficient glucose and amino acids. So the result of fatty acid oxidation is a molecule called acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA is then used within the Krebs cycle to ultimately produce ATP. However, glucose uses the same cycle to produce ATP. Additionally, gluconeogenesis requires one of the enzymes within the Krebs cycle called oxaloacetate. And if we are not taking in any glucose, the body will prioritize gluconeogenesis, thus diverting the oxaloacetate for the process of gluconeogenesis. But this is actually going to remove the oxaloacetate from the Krebs cycle, and fatty acid oxidation will take the hit. So what now we have is this buildup of this acetyl-CoA molecule as a result of beginning the process of oxidizing a fatty acid, but not being able to finish it due to not having enough oxaloacetate. And the liver has this beautiful ability to take these acetyl-CoA molecules and, instead of going through the Krebs cycle, begin to create ketones. So there is actually an enzyme within the liver that takes two molecules of acetyl-CoA, puts them together, and produces acetoacetyl-CoA. And then this acetoacetyl-CoA molecule is turned into HMG-CoA. And finally, HMG-CoA is turned into acetoacetate, which is one of the ketones. And what I mean by this is we actually have three different ketones inside of our body. Acetone, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetoacetate. And acetoacetate can be used to fuel some metabolic functions, but the body will oftentimes turn this acetoacetate into a different ketone body called beta-hydroxybutyrate. And to a lesser extent, it will produce acetone. However, there is one issue when the acetoacetate is converted into acetone. Acetone is actually the chemical used in nail polish and paint remover. And it's oftentimes referred to as a volatile ketone, and oftentimes what we'll do with acetone is simply excrete it in our breath. And this is why some people who are in a state of ketosis report having what's referred to as acetone breath. And this is simply a chemically taste and maybe even smell within one's breath because they are creating some acetone as a byproduct of having acetoacetate being converted to acetone. However, most of the functional ketone bodies in your body will be beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate. And now that we have the ketones, what's the difference between metabolizing ketones and metabolizing glucose or fatty acids? And this is interesting because it actually takes a different set of machinery to use these ketones. And I will note, this is actually one of the reasons why a lot of people, when they first start a ketogenic diet, may actually lose a lot of weight, but may also just not have much energy. The problem here is, is they've actually begun to create a lot of ketones, but their system doesn't really have the requisite enzymes to use them for fuel. So they actually begin excreting a lot of these ketones in their urine, and in essence, they are simply losing energy. The ketones that they formed are meant to be used throughout the body to supply the cells with energy, but if they don't have the right machinery for it, they will just lose this energy in their urine. 
Therefore, technically, they will probably be in more of a caloric deficit at the end of the day, but they will also oftentimes feel very low on energy. And this appears to be the impetus of what's referred to as keto adaptation, or simply a period of time in which you will feel low on energy if you haven't been in a state of ketosis for a prolonged period of time. And the processes occurring during this adaptive period are actually upregulating the enzymes and other factors responsible for using these ketones to efficiently generate fuel. So the process of using ketones is simply just reversing all these steps of creating a ketone. Because gluconeogenesis takes place in the liver, the cells in the brain and the muscle will still have a sufficient supply of oxaloacetate to run the Krebs cycle. What I mean by this is that gluconeogenesis only occurs in the liver, and the liver does this to create the fuel that's necessary for the rest of the body. And then the rest of the body will take the glucose and run it through the Krebs cycle. Therefore, all of the other cells will still have oxaloacetate present and all the things required for the Krebs cycle which was the one thing that was limiting us from continuing to use fatty acids and the reason that we needed to begin creating ketones. So once the ketone actually hits the cell that is going to use it for energy, it takes whatever ketone body it has and turns it into acetyl-CoA. And then the acetyl-CoA is taken through the Krebs cycle and we now have ATP production inside of the cell. And that simply is the physiology of creating and using ketones. And in terms of the keto adaptation, the enzymes that are required to take the ketone and turn it back into acetyl-CoA are the enzymes that are oftentimes deficient if we have typically been running the body off of glucose. And in case you are curious, these include an enzyme such as beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase, which actually converts beta-hydroxybutyrate back into acetoacetate. And there's also another enzyme called thiophorase that will convert acetoacetate into acetoacyl-CoA. And these are the enzymes that are typically deficient in someone who is not, for lack of a better word, keto-adapted. So there's this roadblock at the very beginning, so these ketones are where they need to be, but they are not being oxidized, so eventually they are excreted in the urine or the breath. And with that being said, that was the physiology of ketosis. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for listening. I'll see you next episode.